friends, it's Miss Lynch. I'm here to walk you through how we can create our very own robots. What I need you to do is to get a pencil and a piece of paper. It doesn't matter if you're using a piece of paper that is color, that's really large, like how I'm using, that maybe is a paper that has something written on the other side. That's fine, you can use the back of it. Any type of paper will do. Now, I've put my paper up and down, going vertically. You can always make your paper go horizontally if you'd like to add multiple robots or a robot family, but I'm going to show you using it vertically today just to test this out and learn. If you want to make more robots, by all means you can do that, but at least follow along so you can see how we can do this. I, of course, am going to use a Sharpie today because a Sharpie is easy to see on a screen when we're far away from each other, but a pencil is wise to use because you can always make corrections by using your eraser. So let's get started. I want to start with a robot head. To start with a robot head, I have to think about the shape that I might want to use. Now when I'm doing a robot head, I want to consider that I need to have the rest of my robot in the picture. So if I want to have a body in the picture, I'll have to leave space for the rest of the body. So I like to start a little closer to the top. This is why I like to use a paper facing vertical, but again, you can go horizontally and maybe make multiple robots. You still would be considering the space. So I still would be working up in this area to leave space for the rest of the body. So you can use traditional shapes that we know, like a square, a rectangle, a circle, an oval, a parallelogram. So think about what you might want to do. I'm going to start with kind of a trapezoid head. So I'm going to go near the top of the paper and make my shape. Now I have to consider if I want to add cool parts onto my robot. And notice I messed up a little bit on the edge here. I'm going to just make this a much thicker line to even it out. You know, add some details in it. That way, it looks like that's what I meant to do. But if you have an eraser, you can always edit and change that. I left a little bit of space here if I want to add some details near the top. We'll talk about that next. All right, so I have a robot head. I started with a head shape. What comes next? Well, let's see. Next up is robot head details. Robot head details are going to be using big shape details around the outside of the head. Does my robot have antennas? Does my robot have ears where it can pick up sounds? I don't know. I like to use kind of stack shapes, they're pretty fun, but these details kind of amp up your robot to make it more interesting. So let's try it out. Hmm, what could I do? I said I like those stack shapes, so let me try doing that. So I'm using this same shape and stacking it on top of each other. Maybe I do want to have antennas but I'm going to make them like this. Maybe I'm going to make a circle shape on each side. Again, you do not need to make the shapes that I'm making. You can make any ones that you want. So take a look at some of the ones here. They are pretty fun, so think about what might work best for you. All right, next up, we want to add some details to this head. So how can I do that? Well, let's take a look. If I look at this page, it shows me robot based details. This is where you're going to see your robot's personality. Is your robot really helpful and kind? Is your robot silly? Is your robot angry? I don't know, but you can see that there's some really fun details. You can do things like eliminating, this one looks angry, but there's no mouth on it, just a nose. 
I can see that this one is in profile view. So one thing that you could do is turn your robot to the side. Notice that these are not all symmetrical, same on one side as the other. My one here is same on one side as the other, but you could have something silly like this and have maybe just a detail on one side. So again, this is where erasing or maybe making another robots, you can draw two or three robots at the same time but you can see these face details. Maybe I want to use some bows. Maybe I want to add a bow tie. I have a few friends in our class that like bow ties a lot. So you might wanna add some of those. Notice this one, just using the whole bottom part for a mouth, thinking about adding some type of neck on. And lastly, thinking about eyes. So how could this be? Does your robot see things? Does it need one eye? Does it have two? Could you make it silly like this one, a different type of shape? It's totally up to you. So I'm going to use some shapes for my eyes. I think I'm going to use a shape similar to the ones on the side, like a half circle. Okay, so how can I add to this? Well, hmm, Maybe I'm gonna add some details, some lines coming down on the bottom. Ooh, it almost looks like eyelashes. Maybe I'm gonna go with that look. Make an eyelid. Maybe make some eyelashes going off that. Why not be silly? You could make a nose. Maybe you have some type of mouth. I don't know. Maybe I wanna make an eyeball. totally up to you. So I've added some details. I might want to go in here and add some other details in my face too. I kind of like using just lines since I use some down here and use some in my mouth. So why not repeat some type of pattern that I have going on? Maybe I'll add some in here, make it a little extra. Maybe a little swirl in here. Maybe some curves on here. This is where you can have a lot of fun, just adding those extra details. All right, friends, next up, I need to have a body. So maybe I wanna have that neck that I talked about. Now, if you're a person who wants to make a bow tie, I like to draw the bow tie before I add the neck. Here's how I do it. I start with a circle shape. I make a triangle with no point. And then I like to make a curved line from the corner back to the circle. Then I can add a neck around it using overlap. My second graders should be big experts on this, but first graders, you've used overlap too. So we know that it stops. I can pick up my pencil and draw the rest on the other side. Okay, so next up, body and limbs. So this is where you start to think about how your robot actually will work. Does your robot have claws? What's its function? Function is a fancy word that designers use to talk about how something works. So what's the purpose of your robot? Is your robot helping you clean up your room and maybe has little like vacuum cleaner hands to get all the dust out of the corner or to clean out and be gentle and clean all your toys off without sucking up your toys. Maybe your robot has fingers like a person because it maybe it helps you cook in the kitchen. Maybe it has claws or grabbers. I don't know. Maybe your robot moves around on wheels. So maybe you want to have wheels. So it's totally up to you. Here's a few examples of how to make some bodies. But again, you can bake your body any way you want. You're not stuck doing just the ways that I show you. So you can take a look at these but I'm gonna use some type of shape. So I made my head pretty large and I wanna have room for some limbs. So I think I'm gonna make my body shape a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make my body shape a little bit smaller. Hmm, now what type of limbs am I going to add? Well, I think that I want my robot to kind of be a dancing robot. So I'm going to give it legs so it can dance with me 
and some big long feet. Now I'm drawing sideways, so my drawing again might not be totally perfect. And that's okay. Your first time you're doing something might be not be totally perfect either. I drew all the other robots that are on here and you can see that some I've spent more time making more details, some are maybe a little more successful than others. So don't be stressed out if your first robot is not your favorite. It's okay. Maybe my robot, is, if it's dancing, I think I'm gonna want some arms to do some cool dance moves too. So I think I'm gonna follow the same type of way here and have my robot doing some wavy dance moves. Hmm, if my robot is a dancer, I don't know if it needs necessarily to have fingers, but maybe if it has a dance partner, it might wanna hold their dance partner's hand. So I think I'm gonna give it some type of fingers. Now you can add some details around here too. If you want things to look more 3D, a big thing to do is to use a curved line. So if I want this to look like it's going around, like I could grab it the same way I can grab this, I can see that it is curved. So I'm gonna use a curved line. Notice how this starts to make things appear more 3D. Pretty spectacular. I'm using the same curve, so if this one's curving up, then I make the line curve up in each one. This one's curving this direction, I'm gonna make each one do this. You can always go back and add more. You can only do a few, it's totally up to you. All right, so I now have a pretty awesome robot, but I wanna add some more details in the body. So let me show you some examples of that. So I got my limbs and body done. What's up next? Dun, dun, dun. Robot body details. So again, going back to that function, if your robot is helping you clean your room, is there a button to use the vacuum? Is there a button to sweep? Is there a button to mop? I don't know. I also like using some of these cool lines Maybe if you have a person who's ever watched the cartoon, The Jetsons, you'll see sometimes there's screens on some of the robots on there. So you might want to have that. You might want to add a clock on if your robot is helping you tell time or helping you with your homework. So think about stuff. You could add details that are more human-like, like we added legs, but you could even add like clothing items to your robot. You could add, as here's one that has a wheel. So you know, think about these other parts to a robot that you might want to add. I think I'm going to add a screen and some buttons. So I'm going to make a screen, I think, maybe kind of similar in shape. And my screen maybe moves when the robot is talking. And maybe I'll make some buttons. Again, you could make your buttons symmetrical, where they're the same on one side as the other. Or you can have your buttons be different. Totally up to you. But now I think I have a pretty great robot. What can I do now? Well, <laughs> I could make a robot environment, the location of where my robot is. I could maybe make robot friends or a robot family. And I can add color. I could go in with watercolor paints. I could go in with crayons or colored pencils or markers. So try it out. Make your own robot. Add some color. I'm going to add some color to mine, and I can't wait to see you on Wednesday when you guys show me your robots. We'll get to share out what we did. We can talk about what worked, what didn't work, what we might want to do next time if we draw a robot, and have a blast. So I can't wait to see you. Love you guys.